And now, in this lecture, we will find out the area of the semicircle in four different methods. In the drawing, we have a semicircle that is inscribed by this triangle, triangle ABC. Triangle ABC is a right triangle and it blocks the semicircle. So angle ABC equals to 90 degrees. Side CB of triangle ABC equals to 5 units. Side AB equals to 12 units. And we want to find out the area of this semicircle. So we will find out the area of the semicircle. Uh, and we will start with the first method. Uh, in the first method, we will define the center of the semicircle, this point as point O, and we will also define the touching point of the point of tangency between the hypotenuse AC and the semicircle as point D. Then we will join together points O and D by a straight line. Actually, line segment OD is the radius of this semicircle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the semicircle and ends at point D. That is a point on the semicircle itself, therefore, it is defined as a radius. So we will define the radius of this semicircle as R. So DO will be equal to R. OB it is also the radius of this semicircle, so it equals to R. And uh, you can see from the drawing uh, that OA equals to AB minus BO again AB AB minus BO equals to OA so OA equals to AB that is 12 units minus OB that is the radius of this semicircle so that is to say OA or AO equals to 12 minus R units And uh, I will present to you the first rule, rule number one. According to rule number one, A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. drawn to its point of tangency.
So I read rule number one again. According to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have a circle This is the center of the circle. We we'll define it as point O. And we also have tangent AB to this circle. This is tangent AB. Tangent AB. Tangent AB is tangent to this circle at this point. This is the point of tangency. So we will define the point of tangency as point M. M is the point of tangency. Tangent AB with this circle. We will join points O and M together by a straight line. OM is the radius of this circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the circle and ends at point M. It is the point of the circle itself. Therefore, it is defined as the radius of this circle. So it equals to R, the radius. So here, according to rule number one, a tangent to the circle, to a circle that is to say tangent AB, is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So this radius, radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tangency, of tangent AB with this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So actually, whenever you have a radius like in this drawing that is drawn to the point of tendency here the radius of M is drawn to the point of tendency that is to say it is drawn to point M that is the point of tendency then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees okay so we actually can implement rule number one in our drawing because in our drawing we have AC is tangent to this semicircle at point D. Point D is the point of tangency and we have the radius OD it is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say it is drawn to point D that is the point of tangency of tangent AC with this semicircle, therefore according to rule number one, this the tangent AC will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle will be equal to 
90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number one. So actually angle ADO is the right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. Okay. So we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC and on the right triangle, triangle ADO and we will prove that those two right triangles are similar to each other. I will repeat again. We will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC the big right angle and on the right triangle, triangle ADO. So on those two right triangles, first of all, we know that those two angles, they are both right angles, therefore they are equal to each other. That is to say, angle ABC, this angle, is equal to this angle, angle ADO, and they are both equal to 90 degrees. So, angle ABC of triangle ABC equals to angle ADO of triangle ADO, and they are both, uh, they are both right angles, they are equal to 90 degrees. And we also have here this angle. This angle belongs to the small right angle triangle ADO. We can call it angle OAD. And this angle also belongs to the big triangle, triangle ABC. So angle BAC Angle BAC of triangle ABC is equal to itself to angle OAD of triangle OAD. It is actually a common angle that belongs to both triangles. This angle, that is actually angle ACB or triangle ABC is equal to this angle, that is actually angle DOA of triangle ADO. So I'll write it down. Angle B CA, this angle, equals to angle DOA, this angle, of triangle ADO, so angle BCA equals to angle DOA, according to third angle theorem.
So what is Ferdinger theorem? Ferdinger theorem states that if two angles in one triangle can be went to two angles in another triangle, then the first pair of angles must also can be went. And we actually proved that those two angles in the big right angle triangle ABC can go end to those two angles in the small right angle triangle ADO. Therefore, we proved that those two triangles have two pairs of angles that can go end. Therefore, according to further angle theorem, the third pair of angles. That is to say, those two angles that are defined as the first pair of angles must be also equal to each other. Okay, so we actually proved that all three angles of triangle ABC can go to all three angles of triangle ADO. Therefore, we proved the triangle ABC. is similar, this is the sign of similar to triangle ADO. According to angle, 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 similarity rule. We also prove the triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADO according to angle, 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 similarity rule. So, what is angle, 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 similarity rule? Angle, 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 similarity rule is that if you prove that all three angles in one triangle can go end to all three angles of another triangle, then you prove that those two two angles can go into each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADO, we will conclude that BC over AC, BC over AC equals to AD uh, equals to DO over AO. Okay. BC over AC in triangle ABC equals to DO over AO in triangle ADO. Here, if we focus So this will be question number two. If we focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC, according to the Pythagoras theorem, AB square plus BC square equals to AC square.
I'm repeating it eh? in the right triangle. Triangle ABC according to the Pythagoras theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The square of the hypotenuse is AC square and it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it equals to AB square plus BC square. AB equals to 12 units. It is given as in the question. AB equals to 12 units. So AB square is 12 square. 12 square is 144 plus BC square. BC equals to 5 units. It is given as the question. So BC square will be equal to 5 square. 5 square is 25. And it equals to AC square. AC is the missing variable. So we got that 144 plus 25 equals to AC square. 144 plus 25 is 169. So AC square equals to 169. We'll take a root out of this equation, equation number one, and we will get that AC equals to the square root of 169, that is to say it equals to 13 units. AC equals to 13, so you can write here that AC equals to 13 units. So we return to our second equation that states that BC over AC equals to DO over a O. Okay. I'll write it again according to equation number two. B C over A C equals to D O over A O according to equation number two. BC equals to five units. AC equals to 13 units. And it equals to DO. DO is the radius of the semicircle. That is to say it equals to R. And AO, the hypotenuse of the right triangle, triangle ADO is 12 minus R. So in conclusion, we found out that the to equation number 2, 5 over 13 equals to r times 12 minus r. We will cross multiply equation number 2, and we will get that Five times twelve minus r equals to thirteen r. We will open the brackets in this side of equation number two, and we will get that five times twelve is sixty. Five times minus r is minus five r, and it equals to thirteen r. We will add five r to this equation, equation number two, and we will get that sixty equals to 13 plus 5 is 18R. We will divide this equation, equation number 2, by 18, and we will get that the radius of the semicircle R equals to 60 over 18. Here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator by 6 and we will get that 60 over 6 is 10 and 18 over 6 is 3 so in conclusion we found out that the radius of the semicircle equals to 10 over 3 units and we know that the area of the semicircle 
Now the semi-circle, actually the brackets are the sign for the area. It means the area of the semi-circle equals to pi r square over 2. And uh, r is 10 over 3. So it is actually pi and r square is 10 over 3 square over 2. So it actually equals to pi. 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9. All divided by 2. Here 100 over 2 is 50. So in conclusion we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units or in terms of numbers it equals to 17.45 square units. I we'll repeat again, we found out that the area of this semicircle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. So we finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the area of this semicircle according to the second method. I will not repeat on the things that we have already did in Method one, here we know actually this point is O, this point is D. And we know that this angle equals to 90 degrees. We have already found out that AC equals to 13 units, DO is R, OB is also R, and AO equals to 12 minus R. We found out those things in method 1. And according to the second method, I will present to you a new rule that is actually called either rule number two or two tangents theorem. According to rule number two or two tangents theorem, The lengths of two tangents, the lengths of two tangents of 
to become an external point. to a circle are equal. So I'll write all number two again. According to all number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So what is the meaning of rule number two? The meaning of rule number two is that, that if we have a circle And we have an external point of this circle. This point, point P, is an external point of this circle. Why it is an external point? Because of the fact that point P is not located inside this circle, nor on this circle, but it is located outside of this circle. Therefore, it is defined as an external point. Okay? So if, if from the example point, point P we will draw two tangents to this circle so this will be the first tangent we will define the touching point between the first tangent and the circle as point A and we will also draw from point P that is the external common point we will draw second tangent to this circle so this will be the second tangent and we will define the touching point between the second tangent and the circle as point B. And according to two tangent theorem on rule number two, the lengths of two tangents. So actually the length of the first tangent is AP and the length of the second tangent is BP and according to rule number two the lengths of two tangents, that is to say AP and BP from a common external point the common external point is point P to a circle, from point P we draw two tangents to that circle are equal, so the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal that is to say AP is equal to BP so according to two tangents the arm, whenever you draw two tangents to a circle from a common external point, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. That is to say, in this case, AP will be equal to PB. Okay, so we can actually implement rule number two in our drawing, because in our drawing we have
next external point point C for, and from the external point point C we have the first tangent that is CB and the second tangent to the semicircle is CD and according to two tangent theorem the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other that is to say CB equals to CD okay according to two tangent theorem or rule number two CB is equal to CD okay rule number two CB equals to CD but it is given us in the question that CB equals to 5 units so we can write here that CB equals to 5 units and from this equation we will conclude we will derive that CD also equals to 5 units okay, CD equals to 5 units So we can write here that here CD, this line segment CD equals to 5 units. But we have already found out that the hypotenuse AC equals to 13 units. And we found now that this equals to 5 units. So AD will be equal to AC minus DC. Again, AC minus DC equals to AD. Very simple. Okay? AC is 13 units and DC is 5 units and AD equals to 13 minus 5. That is actually 8 units. So we found out that AD equals to 5 units. We'll focus on the right triangle, triangle ADO. And we will implement the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle, triangle ADO. According to the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle, triangle ADO, The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is the side that is in front of the right angle. That is to say it is AO. So the square of the hypotenuse is AO square. AO square equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say it equals to AD square plus DO square. So I'll repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle ADO, according to the Pythagoras norm, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say AO square equals to AD square plus DO square. We have already found out that AO equals to 12 minus R, so AO square will be equal to 12 minus R square. According to equation number one. And it equals to AD square. AD equals to 8 units, so AD square is 8 square. 8 square is 64 plus DO square. DO equals to R, so DO square will be equal to R square. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 12 minus R square equals to 64 plus R square. We will open the brackets on this side of equation number 1 and we will get that 12 minus R square equals to 12 squared, it is 144 plus R squared minus 24R 
and it equals to 64 plus r squared. So here we have r squared on both sides of equation number one, so r squared will get cancelled. So what is left from equation number one after we cancelled r squared? What is left? It is, a, it is actually Hundred forty four minus twenty four R equals to sixty four. We will subtract sixty four from this equation, equation number one, and we will get that hundred forty four minus sixty four is eighty. Eighty minus twenty four R equals to zero. We will add for, uh, 24R to this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that 24R equals to 80. We will divide this equation, equation number 1, by 24, and we will get that R equals to 80 over 24. Here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator by 8, and we will get that 80 over 8 is 10, and 24 over 8 is 3. So we found out that the radius of the semicircle equals to 10 over 3 units. The radius of the semicircle equals to 8 over 3 units. And the area of the semicircle is equal to pi r square over 2 r is 10 over 3 so r square is 10 over 3 square times pi over 2 so it is pi 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9 all divided by 2 100 over 2 is 50 so it is actually 50 pi over 9 square units, so in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. Okay. So we finished in the second method. In the third method, we will actually draw a mirror image of this figure. We we'll draw a mirror image of this figure and we will get that here.
define the vertex here as point D. So this is the mirror image of this figure. Here. It is actually A, B. AB equals to 12 units, BC equals to 5 units, this point is point D, and because of the fact that this is a mirror image, so BC equals to 5 units, therefore BD will be also equal to 5 units. And uh, we have here an isosceles triangle with the base that equals to 10, <coughs> 10 units and the height to the base equals to 12 units. So the area of this triangle, triangle ADC, it equals to the base times the height over 2. So the area of triangle ADC, it equals to the base that is 10 units, 5 plus 5 is 10, times the height to the base that is 12 units over 2. 10 times 12 is 120, and 120 over 2 is 60. So we found out that the area of triangle ADC is equal to 60 square units and uh, we actually know that whenever a circle is inscribed by a triangle then the radius of this circle or the radius of any circle that is inscribed by a triangle it, uh, it equals to the area of the triangle that blocks the circle over the semi-perimeter of the triangle. So the radius of this circle that is inscribed by triangle ADC will be equal to The area of the triangle that blocks the circle, that is actually the area of triangle ADC. Over the semi-perimeter of triangle ADC. That is actually the radius of the semicircle. I repeat again, whenever you have a circle that is inscribed by a triangle, then the radius of the circle will be equal to the area of the triangle that blocks the circle over the semi-perimeter of the triangle. In this case, we have triangle ADC that blocks the circle. Therefore, the radius of this circle that is inscribed by triangle ADC will be equal to the area of triangle ADC over the semi-perimeter of triangle ADC. And what is the semi-perimeter of any triangle? The semi-perimeter of any triangle is equal to the perimeter of the triangle over 2. The semi-perimeter of any triangle equals to the perimeter of the triangle 
Ovo tu. En de perimeter of triangle ADC equals to AD plus AC. Here it is 13, 13. AD plus AC. Plus DC. Over 2. And AD equals to 13 units, AC equals to 13 units, and DC, it is the base of triangle ADC, it is the base of the associated triangle, triangle ADC, it equals to 10 units, all divided by 2. 13 plus 13 is 26, 26 plus 10 is 36, 36 over 2 is 18. So we found out that the semi-perimeter of triangle ADC equals to 18 units. We already found out that the area of triangle ADC equals to 60 units over the, over the semi-perimeter that is equal to 16 units. It is equal to 18 units. The semi-perimeter equals to 18 units. So the area of triangle ADC is equal to 60 square uni units and the semi-perimeter of triangle ADC equals to 18 units. 60 over 18 we divide both the numerator and the denominator by 6 and we will get that 60 over 6 is 10 and 18 over 6 is 3. So we found out that the radius of the semicircle is equal to 10 over 3 units and the area of the semicircle is equal to pi r square over 2 that is to say it is pi r is 10 over 3 square over 2 so it is pi 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9 all divided by 2. 100 over 2 is 50. So in conclusion, it is equal to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. Okay. So we finished with the third method. In the next step, we will find out the area of this semicircle according to the fourth method. In the fourth method, you will know that it is 90 degrees. We found out that AC is 13 units. This is point O, the center of the semicircle. This is point D. This is a right angle. This is also a right angle. So we will define angle CAB or angle BAC will be defined as angle theta. And uh, If we focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC, in the right triangle, triangle ABC, C 
sinus theta equals to CB over AC I'll repeat again, in the right triangle, triangle ABC, sinus theta equals to CB over AC. Sinus theta, in the right triangle ABC, sinus theta equals to CB over AC. CB equals to 5 units, and AC equals to 13 units. So in conclusion, according to equation number 1, sinus theta, equals to 5 over 13. I'll repeat again, according to equation number 1, CB is 5, AC is 13, therefore sinus, sinus theta equals to 5 over 13. We will focus on the right triangle, triangle ADO, in this small right triangle, in triangle ADO, Sinus theta equals to, this will be equation number two, sinus theta equals to, we know that we already found out that DO equals to R and AO equals to 12 minus R, here OB equals to R. Here in the right triangle, Triangle ADO, sinus theta equals to ODO over AO. I will repeat again, in the right triangle, triangle ADO, sinus theta equals to DO over AO. But we have only found out that DO equals to R and AO equals to 12 minus R. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number two, sinus theta equals to R over 2F minus R. I'll repeat again. Because if you focus on the right triangle, triangle ADO, sinus theta equals to DO over AO, but DO equals to R and AO equals to 12 minus R. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 2, sinus theta equals to R over 12 minus R. But we know that sinus theta according to equation number one must be equal to sinus theta according to equation number two. Okay, so we we'll create equation number three that states that sinus theta according to equation number one that is actually five over thirteen must be equal to sinus theta according to equation number two, that is actually r over 12 minus r. I repeat again, 
the question number three states that sinus theta according to equation number one must be equal to sinus theta according to equation number two. We will cross multiply equation number three and we will get that five times to f minus r equals to 13r. We will open the brackets on this side of equation number three and we will get that 5 times 12 is 60. 5, minus five times minus r is minus 5r and it equals to 13r. We will add 5r to this equation, equation number 3, and we will get that 13r plus 5r is 18r, and it equals to 60. We will divide this equation, equation number 3 by 18, and we will get that the radius of the semicircle equals to 60 over 18. Here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator by 6, and we will get that 60 over 6, 60 over 6 is 10, and 18 over 6 is 3. So in conclusion, we found out that the radius of the semicircle equals to 10 over 3 units, and the area of the semicircle is equal to pi r square over 2. That is to say, pi r is 10 over 3 square over 2. So it is pi. 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9. All divided by 2. 100 over 2 is 50, so in conclusion we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. Okay, we finished with the fourth method. Now I'll summarize the lecture. Actually, we wanted to find out the area of this semicircle. wanted to find out the area of this semicircle and we know that BC equals to 5 units AC the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle ABC is unknown and AB equals to 12 units and uh, this angle, angle ABC equals to 90 units, uh, to 90 degrees and we want to find out the area of this semicircle. So we define the center of this semicircle as point O. And then we actually define the touching point between the tangent AC and this semicircle as point D. And uh, all this is the radius, all B is also the radius, and uh, AB minus OB is OA, again AB minus OB is OA, that is to say OA equals to 12 minus R, and we also have rule number one. According to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So, what is the meaning of rule number one? 
the meaning of four, number one is that if we have this circle and tangent AB to this circle, this is the center of the circle, OM is the radius, and point M is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, according to rule number one, a tangent to a circle, that is to say AB, is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So, because of the fact that this radius, the radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to, to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. So we can implement rule number one in our drawing. Because in our drawing we have this radius, the radius OD, it is drawn to the point of tendency. That is to say it is drawn to point D, that is the point of tendency of tangent AC with this semicircle. Therefore, According to rule number one, the tangent AC will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay? And then, we... First of all, I will... In the right triangle, triangle ABC, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say AC square equals to BC square plus AB square. Okay? AB square plus BC square equals to AC square, according to the Pythagoras theorem. AB equals to 12, so AB square is 12 squared, 12 squared is 144 plus BC, BC, BC squared, BC is 5, so BC squared is 5 squared, 5 squared is 25 and it equals to AC squared. So we got that 144 plus 25 equals to AC squared, 144 plus 25 is 169. So found out that AC squared equals to 100. 69, we took a root out of this equation, equation number 1, and we found out that AC equals to 13 units. So AC equals to 14 units, the hypotenuse of the right triangle, triangle ABC is equals to 13 units. Then we proved that the big right triangle, triangle ABC is similar to the right triangle, triangle ADO. Why they are similar to each other? First of all, we know that they get those two angles are right angles that are equal to each other. Triangle angle ABC equals to angle ADO, they are both equal to 90 degrees. This angle is a common angle, it belongs to both the angles, so this angle equals to itself. Angle BAC of triangle ABC equals to angle ADO of triangle ADO. Uh, angle BAC equals to angle. Uh, DAC, it is a common angle, it belongs angle, this angle is belongs to triangle AOD and angle A also belongs to the big triangle, triangle ABC. Therefore, we can write down that this angle equals to itself, angle BC equals to angle OC, it's a common angle. And those two angles they are also equal to each other according to the angle theorem. What is the angle theorem? Ford angle theorem says that if two angles in one triangle can go into two angles in another triangle, then the third, third pair of angles must also can go into. So we have in this triangle, triangle ABC, we have those two angles that can go into to those two angles in triangle ADO. Therefore, we have two pairs of angles that can go into those two triangles. Therefore, according to the third angle theorem, the third pair of angles, that is to say those two angles, must also can go in. That is to say, angle BAC equals to angle DOA according to the third angle theorem. Those two angles must be also equal to each other. So we actually proved that all angles in triangle ABC can run to angle angles in triangle ADO and therefore we proved 
the triangle ABC is congruent, is uh, similar to triangle ADO, according to angle, 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 similarity rule. So what is angle, 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 similarity rule? Angle, 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 similarity rule is that if you prove that all three angles in one triangle can go in to all three angles in another triangle, then you prove that those two triangles can go into each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that triangle ABC is similar to triangle ABO, we will conclude that BC over AC equals to DO over AD. Okay, BC is 5 units, AC is the hypotenuse of triangle AC, ABC it is equal to 13 units, DO is R, DO equals to R, and AO equals to 12 minus R. DO is R, and AO equals to 12 minus R. We first multiplied this equation, equation number 2, and we found out that 5 times 12 minus R equals to 13 R. We open the brackets in equation, in this side of equation number 2, and uh, 5 times 12 is 16, 5 times minus r is minus 5r. So in conclusion, we found out that 60 minus 5r equals to 13r. We, we added 5r to this equation, equation number 2, and we got that 13r plus 5r is 18r. So in conclusion, we found out that 60, 60 equals to 18r. We divided this equation, equation number 2, by 18, and we got that the radius of the semicircle equals to 16 over 18. We divided both the numerator and the denominator by 6, and we got that 60 over 6 is 10, and 18 over 6 is 3. So we found out that the radius of the semicircle equals to 10 over 3 units, and the area of the semicircle equals to pi r square over 2. R is 10 over 3, so pi r square is pi times 10 over 3 square over 2. 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9, so in conclusion we found out that the r of the semicircle equals to pi times 9, pi times 100 over 9 over 2, 100 over 2 is 50, so in conclusion we found out that the radius of the semicircle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. So we finished with the first method. Then we found out the area of this semicircle according to a second method. According to a second method, we actually used uh, rule number 2 or 2 tangents theorem. According to rule Number two, two tangents theorem. According to two tangents theorem, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So, what is the meaning of rule number two? The mean of rule number two is that if we have this circle and we have point P that is a common external point and we will draw two tangents to this circle from point P. The first tangent is PA, the second tangent is PB and uh, According to rule number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are, are equal. So whenever you draw two tangents from a common external point to a circle, that is to say from point P, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. The length of the first tangent is AP, the length of the second tangent is BP, and according to rule Number two or two tangents theorem, the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say, AP is equal to BP. Okay, so whenever you draw two tangents to a circle for a common external point to that circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. In this case, AP will be equal to BP. And we can implement rule number two in our drawing because in our drawing we have the external point, point C, and from the external point C we have 
two tangents to this uh, semicircle. The first tangent is CB, the second tangent is CD. And according to uh, uh, according to third, uh, according to two tangent theorem, the length of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say, CB is equal to CD. Okay, according to uh, two tangent theorem, CB is equal to CD of rule number two. According to rule number two, CB is equal to CD. But we know that CB equals to five units. It is given as the question. So we can write here that CB equals to five units, and from this equation, we will conclude that CD also equals to five units. So we know that CD equals to five units. AC equals to 13 units. Therefore, AD is equal to AC minus DC. That is to say, AD equals to 13 minus 5. That is to say, it equals to 8 units. So we found out that AD equals to 8 units. And in the right triangle, triangle ADO, according to the Pythagoras theorem, AO square equals to AD square plus DO square. In the right triangle, small triangle, triangle ADO, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, AO square equals to AD square plus DO square. AO equals to 12 minus R. So A O square will be equal to 12 minus R square, A D equals to R, or D O equals to R, so D O square is equal to R square, A O equals to A D equals to 8, so A D square will be equal to 8 square, 8 square is 64. So in conclusion we found out that 12 minus R square equals to 64 plus R square. We open the brackets. On this side of equation number one, and we found out that 12 minus r square equals to 144 plus r square minus 24r, and it equals to 64 plus r square. We have r square on both sides of equation number one, so r square will get cancelled. And what is left after we cancel r square from equation number one? What is left it is actually 144 minus 24r equals to 64, we, sub, uh, we subtract that 64 from this equation, equation number 1, and we got that uh, 144 minus 64 is 80, so in conclusion we found out that 80 minus 24r equals to 0, we added 24r to this equation, equation number 1, and we got that 80 equals to 24r, we divided the equation number 1 by 24, and we, got, we found out that r equals to 80 over 24, we divided both the numerator and the denominator of this number by 8, 80 over 8 is 10, and 24 over 8 is 3. So in conclusion, we found out that the radius of the semicircle equals to 10 over 3 units, and therefore the area of the semicircle equals to pi r square over 2. So it is pi, r is 10 over 3, so r square is 10 over 3 square over 2. 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9, all divided by 2. 100 over 2 is 50, so in conclusion we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. We finished with the second method, then I presented to you how to find out the area of this semicircle according to a third method. In the third method, we actually uh, draw a mirror image of this figure, and we got this draw uh, figure after we combine together. We combine together the mirror image of this figure, and we got this figure. This is the combination of the mirror image of this figure. We got this figure. That is the mirror image of the previous figure. And here we know that. Uh, the hypotenuse AC is 13 units, it, 
and it is, on, it is also equal to AD that is also 14 units, AB is equal to 12 units, BC equals to 5 according to what is given us in the question, but therefore BD will be also equal to 5 units. So this is an hypotenuse, uh, this is the, an isosceles triangle. In this isosceles triangle, the area of any triangle is equal to the base times the height over 2. The base of this isosceles triangle is DC, that is actually 5 plus 5. That is to say, the base equals to 10 units, the height to the base is 12 units, the height must create 90 degrees with the base, and AB also creates 90 degrees, it is indeed creates 90 degrees with the base DC, therefore the height of this triangle is 12 units, so it is actually 12 times 10 over 2, 12, uh, 12 times 10 is 120, 120, 120 over 2 is 60, so we found out that the area of triangle ADC is equal to 60 square units. And uh, actually, the radius of any circle that is inscribed by a triangle is equal to the area of the triangle that blocks the circle over the semi-perimeter of the triangle. And the area of triangle ADC is equal to 60 square units and the semi-perimeter of the triangle ADC equals to the perimeter of triangle ADC over 2. The perimeter is AD plus AC plus DC over 2. That is to say it is 13 plus 13 plus 10 over 2. 13 plus 13 plus 10 over 2 is 18. So we found out that the area of triangle ADC is 60 square units and the semi-perimeter is 18 units, so the radius of the circle will be equal to 60 over 18, that is actually 10 over 3. So we found out that the radius of the same circle equals to 10 over 3 units, and the area of the same circle equals to pi r square over 2, and pi r square over 2 is pi times r square is 10 over 3 square over 2. In conclusion, we found out that the radius and the area of the semicircle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 17.45 square units. Okay, we finished with the third method. Then I presented to you how to find out the area of this semicircle according to a form. Uh, method. Here we actually defined angle BAC as theta, and if we focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC, then sinus theta equals to BC over AC. I repeat again, on the right triangle, triangle ABC, sinus theta equals to CB over AC, PC equals to 5 units, and AC equals to 13 units. So, we found out that according to equation number 1, sinus theta equals to 5 over 13. And if we focus on the right triangle, triangle ADO, here sinus theta equals to DO over AO. On the right triangle, triangle ADO, sinus theta equals to DO over OA. DO is R and OA is 12 minus R. So in conclusion, we found out that sinus theta, according to equation number 2, equals to R over 18, R over 12 minus R. So we have sinus theta according to equation number 1 and sinus theta according to equation number 2. But we know that sinus theta according to equation number 1 must be equal to sinus theta according to equation number 2. So equation number 3 states that sinus theta according to equation number 1, that is actually 5 over 13, equals to sinus theta according to equation number 2, that is actually r over 12 minus r. Okay? 
Sinus theta according to equation number one is five over thirteen, and sinus theta according to equation number two is r over twelve minus r. Because multiply this equation and equation number three, and we've got that five times twelve minus r equals to thirteen r. We open the brackets here, and we got that sixty five times twelve is sixty. Five times minus r is minus five r. So we got this equation. Then we added five r to this equation, and we found out that. Uh, 13 hours plus 5 r is 18 hours. So in conclusion, we found out that it 18 r equals to 60. We divided this equation, equation number 3, by 18. And we got that the radius of the semicircle equals to 60 over 18. We divided both the numerator and the denominator by 6. And we got that 60 over 6 is 10. And 18 over 6 is 3. So we found out that the, hour, uh, the, the radius of the semicircle equals to 10 over 3. Then we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to pi r square over 2. And r is 10 over 3, so r square is 10 over 3 square. 10 over 3 square is 100 over 9. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to 1 times 100 over 9 over 2. 100 over 2 is 50, so in conclusion, we found out that the R of the same circle equals to either 50 pi over 9 square units, or in terms of numbers, the R of the same circle equals to 17.45 square units. Okay, thank you very much.